Hello and welcome to MSU Comm's newest YouTube series. We will be interviewing residents from multiple surgical specialties. Today's interview features a general surgery resident. Enjoy. All right, Dr. Gadana, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for you, having me. Yeah, great. Yeah, we appreciate it a lot. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourself, that would be great. Sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Ivy Godana. I am a first year, well, I guess to, as of today, I'm a second year general surgery resident at McLaren. Um, I am originally from East Africa, um, moved here when I was young, um, went through school and undergrad in Texas. I did my medical school at AT School University at the Arizona campus, and I somehow found myself in the state of Michigan. I went and a specialty that I love, so. Well, it's good that you love it. I went to undergrad in Texas. Yeah. I, you know this already, but I went to undergrad in Texas yeah. as well and somehow found myself here too. So, you know, <laughs> it happens. Um, it happens. <laughs> what, uh, what made you pick general surgery as the field, as opposed to any other field of surgery or any other field generally? Well, when I actually, when I started medical school, I was very, very sure that I was going to be a pediatrician. Um, I loved kids. I'd worked with kids. Like I was the best camp counselor, you know? Um, and when I started med school, that's what I was focused on. Now, when we began clinicals, it became a very, very different picture. I got a very different feel for pediatrics. Not that I didn't enjoy the rotation, but I think what was demanded of pediatri pe uh, pediatrics was um, a lot more involvement with social work. And I think, <clears throat> not to say that it's a bad thing, but I wanted so much to focus on like a, 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 a definitive outcome. So I canceled pediatrics after I had the rotation and I was lucky to have an incredible mentor. Um, I'll never forget her name, Dr. Gail Pearson from Howard University and Providence Hospital in Washington, DC. She um, essentially took me under her wing she taught me the ins and outs of surgery. Um, I could see how well she listened to her patients and I could see what deep rapport that she got to build with them in such a short period of time. Um, after that, I thought to myself, like, I love to connect with patients. Um, I love to follow, like, general surgery is considered primary care. So seeing them in clinic, like having continuity of care is important to me. Um, and then third, I love to have a definitive outcome. PEDS didn't work for me because you have to wait a lot on either social services or parents to feel comfortable with certain treatments. Um, and surgery just kind of fit the bill. Like you have a patient with a gallbladder issue, guess what? If they're cleared for surgery, you go out and take out that gallbladder issue and they are fine. Like you have a definitive outcome. So that's how I ended up choosing general surgery. It was just simply for the fact that I love the, the art, the practice of it, the medicine of it. And I love that it made me feel like I've achieved something with my patient. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a really great story. I really like, especially talking about mentorship, which I think is so important. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like surgery is one of the, those specialties where you can't just read the book. So much of it is very, it's the art of medicine, the art of surgery. And you can't just read that and then go out and practice. A lot of it is what you see and what you do. How often do you see something? How many times have you seen it being treated? So having a mentor to really guide you through that is so, so, so imperative. That's really awesome. I love that. It's really cool. Um, so what, what made you pick the residency program at McLaren? And did you have any specific criteria that you were like, when you were interviewing at programs, were you like, oh man, this was a red flag, so I'm not even gonna rank this, or you know, whatever your criteria yeah. were. Yeah, everyone has a different approach to this. Um, for me, I actually didn't have any criteria <laughs> at all. Um, I knew that I loved surgery and I think in my mind, I thought, well, if I love surgery, I love it anywhere. Like, if you get to do what you love to do, you could be in the middle of Idaho and without your family and friends. Not, no offense to from Idaho. <laughs> um, or you could be in the Caribbean or, you know, in, like, for me, back home in East Africa. Like, I could be there and love it. Um, so I really didn't have, like, a location criteria, per se. Um, as far as what I was looking for was, when I went on my audition, things that I was paying a lot more attention to was 
how happy are the residents that are there? Um, do they get along? Um, do they operate with like autonomy? Do they have early autonomy? That those were the things that were really important because as far as like, are they happy? Wellness is always gonna be number one. As a primary care physician or a surgical specialty or whatever it is you do, your wellness has to always be number one. So being able to see that employed in training was important to me. Um, residents getting along actually does really fit into wellness because there are uh, certain programs that may be heralded as being toxic or malignant in the sense that maybe their way of learning is very abrasive or aggressive. And um, in situations like that, you can find that some people may not be able to thrive. They can survive, but you wanna thrive. So those were things that I was paying a lot of attention to, like, are they happy and do they get along? And then obviously like, you know, the, lo the location thing was like, a, eh, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I ended up choosing McLaren because, um, well, I, I guess my match story was a little bit unusual. I actually w went home, like back home for a while um, and came back and kind of had to rush to put together my rank list. So I kind of threw everything on there. <laughs> um, but I ended up with a McLaren and I'm grateful. Um, I, you know, one thing I liked about the program when I was auditioning was the residents have autonomy early on. Like you'll see a PGY2 doing a lot coolly, not perfectly, you know, or like, you know, or really badly, but you see that they're learning and those are important tools to begin early on. And then um, I also liked the program director, Dr. Mark Jones, got along with him well. He's a good teacher. So it was easy for me to envision that I would be, um, that I would enjoy training to be a, a physician and a surgeon at a place like that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty cool. I, again, loving the mentorship as, aspect there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I know this is kind of a weird question and one that is hard to answer, but is there like a typical day or, you know, because there are, it's surgery and it's medicine and you're going to mm -hmm. different fields, is there like a, a couple typical days and, and what that would look like? You know, do you wake up at 3 a.m. Sure. or 4 a.m. and when do you get home, that kind of stuff? Yeah, so a typical day is um, we have sign out at 6.45 in the morning because um, operations and cases begin at around 7.30. So when we have sign out at 6.45, it's expected that you've seen all your patients and you've also done all of their notes and you have like a tentative plan for the day that you'll discuss with your attending. So if I have to be done by 6.45, I like to count backwards. <laughs> I got to start walking down there by 6.40. And then... Um, I typically give myself up until 6.30 to get everything done. Um, so if I have three patients, maybe, okay, let's say one patient will maybe take me on average about 10 minutes to see if I'm familiar with them. If I'm not familiar with them, maybe about 20 minutes. Um, so I give time for that. So if I have, you know, four unfamiliar patients, that's 20 times four, 80. So then I have to come in a little before uh, five. Yeah, well, no, yeah. Yeah, a little after five. <laughs> Had to do math there. <laughs> um, so that's a typical day. I'll wake up in the morning. Maybe I'll wake up at five. The earliest I've ever gotten up was about four because I had a ton of patients. I would shower, get out of the house by 4.35, 4.40. I do spend time every morning in devotion. My faith is really important to me. Uh, so I spent at least 10 minutes uh, either um, reading a holy book and praying. Um, and then I drive to the hospital. I get there. I drop off my stuff and I go see my patients. Um, so we have sign out 645 and then we have operations from 730 to maybe 130, 230, 330. And then after that, we'll just see consults on the floor and maybe emergent cases and then sign out at the end of the day to the night team. Um, so that's a typical, of like a very, very broad overview of a typical day. In between those days are like, you gotta rush to fill a script. You know, you gotta rush and run with your attending. You gotta run here, you gotta run there. But in general, that's what a typical day looks like. That's that's awesome. Um, I like the working backwards too, to figure out like how long you need <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah.
that's my that's my mom's uh technique so one of the one of the things that i one of the one of the best advice that she ever gave me was to uh, when it comes to timing yourself always expect that things will take you longer yeah for you sure. know whether it's driving or eating or anything just so you're not rushed yeah that yeah. is a wise saying I, I like the parental advice um yeah. so uh what what type of setting do, are you hoping to practice in when you finish residency whether it's like academic or urban rural you know whatever it is yeah um to be honest i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> totally acceptable um, yeah i mean I'm, I'm a second year now so i know i have there's a lot that i haven't seen so like I could go into surgical oncology. Um, I could go into trauma surgery. I actually kind of like trauma. Um, I could go into vascular, uh, but I will not be doing vascular. That's one specialty that I crossed off the list. Um, but what I'm really passionate about is global surgery. So it's essentially the public health aspect of surgery. It's bringing, um, I guess essentially like global health into the field of surgery and then taking it back out into the places that need it. So it's not missionary work, but it's actually, it's sort of the epidemiology of surgery and being able to, you know, let's say I want to travel to, let's say a country like Namibia and I want to go and, you know, everybody has like, well, not everybody, but there's a high incidence of like some weird lipoma that makes it's disfiguring or it's uncomfortable to like, you know, do your acti activities of daily living, like being able to go there, understand the population, understand the medicine behind why, why, they're, why they have it and being able to perform a successful operation. That to me is what I would like to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> Sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. We had a, we had a speaker come who did not the exact same thing, but um, who basically did international surgery and she's done it every year for, you know, I don't even, I don't remember, but a, a long number of years, something like 30 years, she's gone to awesome. uh, like some country in um, Central Central America and done surgery and, and she like gave a presentation on it. And I really hope I can do like a rotation there during third year or fourth year or something. You should. Honestly, uh, medical school is the perfect time to expose yourself to stuff like that. Um, just because when you're in, in academic, like I guess in residency, uh, every rotation has to be accounted for. So those, those are really few and far between. So if you have that chance, Zach, definitely take it. Yeah, I hope, I, I hope, I hope that even in medical school, I'll have the flexibility, which I think I would a little bit more in medical yeah. school. Um, okay, great. So do you have any advice for people who are considering general surgery? Um, you know, just general advice, like how they can match well or how they can decide on surgery, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'll start off with deciding on surgery. Um, this really, people that can decide early on, I have some peers and some colleagues of mine who knew they wanted to be surgeons since they were babies. Um, but that's not the case for everybody. So just because you change your mind last minute does not mean that you're not cut out for the specialty. Like you have the desire or the, if you have the desire to change your mind about your specialty and move into surgery, then by all means do it. Um, it's a very re rewarding specialty. Um, as far as like matching into surgery, um, I think that Surgery, surgery and other like surgical subspecialties are considered competitive, but I think that the most competitive applicant isn't always guaranteed to be the best surgeon. And I'm not saying that, you know, that that's a definitive thing, but I think that surgery in any field you go into, your success will be determined on how much you love it and how much work you're willing to put into it. And also the fact that you're not giving up on it. Like it's five years and it's much longer than most, you know, training. Um, but your commitment to it will always reward you. So when it comes to matching, yes, you know, you want to have good board scores and you want to do a lot of activities to demonstrate that you're interested. Like, for example, you're a leader in SOSA that speaks volumes of your passion about it. Um, so, you know, doing things like that and staying passionate and staying involved and just trying to do your best, I think those are always going to be winning attributes and uh, residency programs do recognize that. Um, as far as anything about surgery in general, um, I personally like to dispel the belief that surgeons 
are mean. <laughs> I don't think that, I, okay, and to be fair and honest, sometimes, yeah, you will meet people like that. Um, but other times, I think in, even in the more, the more impactful uh, teachers and mentors are the ones who are willing to be patient with your um, trainees or be patient with your students to teach them to appreciate the art of medicine. So you do not have to be mean to be a good surgeon. <laughs> good to um, know. But, it, but, but I do promise you that being a good and a kind person will make you a great surgeon. So it's really important to differentiate the two. Um, and the other thing that I do wanna mention about surgery is it is still very much a male dominated specialty. So I would really encourage women that are interested in surgery to get involved in female surgical organizations. One of them is the Association of Women Surgeons. Um, we do incredible work. I'm part of their, their team. And um, I've been so encouraged and gained a ton of incredible mentors from there. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in specialty and you're a female, please don't be shy away from it. They actually have like, a, they have a student committee we have a resident committee and obviously independent practitioners committee. So, you know, in all fields of training. So you can definitely find a ton of really good resources. Um, and then the last thing I had to say about surgery is um, if you work hard, then everything in the world has to give you whatever it is you're looking for. You know, if you work hard at something, if you're passionate, if you're present, if you're a kind person um, and you deeply care for your patients, then you will absolutely make a great surgeon. So, Awesome. That's it. <laughs> Love, I, this has been a great interview. I've been loving this. Um, oh, thanks. Um, so yeah, so do you have any, obviously you can't go into too many specifics, but broadly, do you have like a specific case or a patient that you just love, you know, just a great story or even it doesn't have to be a case or a patient. It could be like, I really love doing you know, some sort of procedure or surgery or something like that? Yeah. Um, I actually do have a story, um, a quick anecdote about a patient. Um, I used to think that one of the hardest jobs was to go tell a patient that they have cancer and like that, you know, nothing can be done about it. Um, but one day I had a patient who, you know, came into the hospital. They were very yellow, super jaundiced. And they had um, a pancreatic head mass. And, um, you know, we did all the imaging studies, you know, to kind of, before we found out it was a pancreatic head, head mass, even though that's what we suspect anyway. But um, when we did the CT imaging and like had um, spoke, with radi I spoke with radiologists and they were like, oh, okay, actually, you know, this patient's um, head mass is totally isolated. like. You can actually just like take it out, you know, it's, it's respectable. And I remember going back to tell the patient like, so you have cancer, but the good news is, is that it's salvageable. Um, she actually wanted to cry and she did cry. Yeah. But in that moment, I think um, I wanted to cry seeing her cry. <laughs> and um, I remember I really didn't have anything to say I wanted to give her the space to express herself. But I just, I remember telling her like, hey, I'll be here if you need me, like in the room, like I can stay here if you'd like me to. Um, and I remember she looked up at me and she said, that's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. <laughs> um, so that was a real pivotal moment for her. She underwent the surgery and, it, um, and I believe that she's doing fine today. <laughs> that's but, awesome. Um, yeah, but you know th those moments where you can actually like be a part of uh, a very important uh, time in someone's life as physicians, you will be. You know, um, being able to be there and to be there for her, I think, um, made me understand the importance of empathy in doing a specialty like this. Like you have to be deeply, deeply empathetic. Yeah. That's, that's really, I mean, that's a powerful story. It's a great story. I love that. Um, 
So we've ended, we've reached the end of my like, you know, my dumb little script that I have to go through with you. But uh, if you have any like any other general comments that you want to share or and you've already shared one um, that is normally a thing that I would ask, which is women and women in surgery, which I know it's definitely considered a voice club, but you, you talked about that. But yeah. um, any other general comments or anything else that you'd like to close with? Um, you know, I, I think that <clears throat> there's a lot of underrepresentation in medicine in general, and there's a lot of underrepresentation, especially in surgery, I've already mentioned that, and even more so like with our orthopedic colleagues as well. Um, but I think that all of this falls on sometimes our inability to see people that look like ourselves in a space like that. So that's, you know, and you got it like right on the mark in the beginning of the interview, the importance of mentorship, like you have to have someone that's able to show you the ropes, you know? It's important to have good chiefs, good senior residents that you can go to and say, hey, I need help. But I think it means more when it's someone that's familiar to you. You know, for that young PGY1, it's important, young PGY1 female resident, she has to be able to see a senior female resident to know, okay, well, I can make it in this perceived voice, voice club, right? And even the same with minorities, like being able to see black female surgeons or black male surgeons, you know, I think it gives everyone the when people shine their light in that way, I think it gives them, it gives everyone else that watches them or sees them the, I guess, permission to, to be the same way, like sort of like your dreams are valid kind of thing. So I think that's oftentimes not really spoken about it as much. So I just wanted to highlight that you can be whatever you want to be, even if you don't see representation, even though you may not see someone that may look like you, speak like you, live their life like you. Um, surgery does not discriminate. Surgery is one of the best specialties. I've said that like a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's a beautiful art. It is a global field, and it's just waiting for the next generation of caring and smart doctors to be a part of it. So. Awesome. I love how positive you are about this. This has been a great interview. We, um, oh, I'm I sure. Tried to be. Yeah, no, it's it's refreshing because as you see, I, as you said, I think uh, sometimes surgeons have a reputation for being mean. So, I appreciate the positivity. Um, I'm sure our members will really appreciate this. This has been a great interview. Thank you so much for for sharing your time. Oh, I know you as that. you know second year resident, I'm sure you're so busy. So thank you for this. I'm actually on anesthesia, <laughs> which has been nice. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna recruit um, some of my SOSA members to anesthesia. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, well, th this is the thing. Every time I've been, when I'm on, when I'm in any room, I literally, I start off behind the curtain, and then somehow I'm like, oh, I'm on the other side of the curtain now. I'm literally <laughs> watching the operation and not even paying attention to what's going on on the other side. But, um, yeah, yeah, surgery is the place to be for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. All right. I'll end there. I'll end there. Surgery is the place to be. Thank you so much. <laughs>